It's no secret that Halo Infinite is a game under a huge amount of fire right now, mostly spread out of the game's failure to not just meet expectations of fans, but just the general promises and implications from 343. And all this is compounded by the tremendously long wait time this game continues to have between content updates. There's been no shortage of reaction from Halo players, and on September 4th, I sought out a means to collect, harness, and reflect that reaction from fans in a way that was observable and packageable, with the goal of creating a data resource for the community and an open letter to 343. From this, the Halo Community Census was born, a survey designed to capture key input from the community, all while being cross-referenceable for hidden yet crucial key insights. My goal for this survey was to get feedback from at least 10,000 Halo players. To my utter surprise, 17,107 Halo players chimed in. This video will work in two key parts. First, an open letter to 343 discussing key takeaways from the survey, and then second, a set of observations from me directed towards the community for reference discussion. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so because analytics driven content is a mainstay on this channel and you should expect even more following this. Before we get to the open letter, please listen to this preface. I was not hired, asked, or otherwise solicited by 343 or Microsoft to create this survey, nor analyze this data. The intent of the survey is not to demand singular change based on their responses. It's for 343 to see input they otherwise have not been able to observe on their own and to provide the community with a public access data resource for what Halo players actually think. The survey here is intended to be of a random, representative sample population that within reasonable means is a good general reflection of what Halo players in mass think. Understand that an entry level bias of this survey is that it's most available to people who seek Halo out beyond just playing the game. The respondees are people who engage with Halo externally in some way. The survey was distributed on social media, YouTube, Reddit, Discord, and on forums. The survey tweet was seen 296,000 times by Twitter users, the YouTube video was viewed a little over 20,000 times, the Reddit post went to the hot list on r slash Halo with 1.3 thousand upvotes, and however else it was shared beyond that. 17,107 people in total completed the survey. Let's start. To whom it may concern at 343 Industries. A large portion of this survey was specifically about Halo Infinite and players' feelings on the current state of key parts of the game. The game is struggling to deliver the multiplayer experience that was implied by your teams leading to release, and much of that failure to deliver is related to multiplayer content, player expression, and the implementation of typical live service features seen in other titles, like a season pass and live events. 59.5% of respondees ranked the live service of Halo Infinite very poorly, with an additional 26.2% ranking it poorly, meaning that over three-fourths of the survey population is dissatisfied with Infinite's live service model. The live service model in this game controls major aspects of player expression, with a crushing majority of cosmetics being related to live service tools like events, passes, and stores. 63.7% of respondees ranked player expression poorly, but I want to go beyond this and revisit a statement made about this game prior to launch. It was stated that if players liked the customization system of Halo Reach, they would like Halo Infinite system. Respondees were asked which Halo title had the best player expression experience. Over 77% said Halo Reach. But of the 77% of players who loved Reach's customization, only a little over 7% actually rated Infinite's customization positively. Continuing to talk about previous statements, the coding system was promoted as being a superior option to standard color selection, such that it would allow players more options for expression than ever before. I imagine this is true from a raw numerical standpoint, as technically there are probably multiple shades of one color spread across multiple coatings. But is that raw numerical input reaching fans? No. Over 85% of respondees reported that Infinite does not give them the ability to convey their favorite colors in customization. 
likely the product of not being able to apply multiple coatings onto multiple pieces of armor, or how coatings fully dictate the arrangement of colors on a singular piece of armor. Finally, regarding player expression, I'd like to talk a little bit about Infinite's approach to body type selection, which in this game is notably geared towards androgyny. There is nothing wrong with that, as having an androgynous body type may be valuable to some players, but in Infinite it was delivered at the expense of a markedly feminine body type, akin to what was present in Halo's Reach 4 and 5. I have been personally disappointed with 343's reaction to player feedback about this, as 343 has seemingly taken an apathetic stance to players' thoughts. The most vocal feedback has been from the women who play Halo who want a markedly feminine option for customization. 61% of the women in the survey reported they feel Infinite does not provide them the proper option for body expression. But then in addition, 54% of non-binary respondees also reported Infinite does not give them the body option they want, and even 34% of men reported not having the option they actually wanted either. I understand that gender and body identity are sensitive topics, but I do implore 343 to consider that their attempt to enhance equality in Infinite has not had the intended impact, and if anything, has potentially alienated all Halo fans, regardless of gender, who identify strongly with feminine traits. Masculine, feminine, and androgynous body types are all possible to coexist. There should not have to be a choice. When we revisit the multiplayer experience as a whole, I wanted to poke and prod at the idea that Infinite is supposed to be a return to form, a revival for the franchise, and the usher of a new era. Respondees were asked if Infinite represented the type of multiplayer experience they expect in Halo. 70% said no. There might be some polarity behind the scenes, however. Despite being less than a year old versus Halo's nearly 20 year history, Infinite was reported as the multiplayer of choice for about 11% of respondees, so nearly 1 in every 10 Halo players would report Infinite as their favorite MP. Think about how that number would grow with further improvement to the MP experience. In fact, even in its current state, the raw potential of the Infinite MP counterweights some of its negative elements. About 37% of respondees had a negative view of Infinite MP, and 26% had a positive one. That means 37% of players landed in the middle and could be swayed based on how the game develops. That is insane potential. So what are some of the ways that that sway could happen? 343 has acknowledged several key areas of the game that need worked on, and I presented these to the survey takers and asked them to choose what was most critical to them. Almost half said the amount of multiplayer content is what they valued the most. I want to close the open letter by sharing this question in particular. Would you recommend Halo Infinite to a friend? 65.4% of respondees said no. The total results of the survey I'm sure provide even more insights, but from high up, the metrics I just stepped through are the ones that are most often discussed, but seldom quantified. They are things that have the most heavy and frequent impact on player experience, and therefore are some of the most major contributors to player feedback regarding the game. I don't doubt that 343 already understands this, but I think the growing frustration is born out of how the acknowledgement of these issues is just that in acknowledgement. Infinite is beyond the phase of statements and promises. There needs to be actions and results. I don't believe it's feasible for Infinite, or any game, to appease all fans, but that's not what's being asked for here. We're asking for Infinite to appease onto itself, to deliver the experience that was promoted and that we have seen to be possible. I do not condone or represent the volatile, aggressive, or otherwise despicable reactions a vocal minority of fans have cast recently, but I do believe the 17,107 Halo players who participated in this survey represent the greater majority of fans who feel strongly for wanting change and, until now, had felt like they were helpless to the benefit of Halo Infinite. Whether that number is 17,000, 170,000, or 1.7 million, it would be at 343's loss to simply ignore the voices here who have gathered in the name of collaborated data. Collectively, we have shared the roadmap of what will improve the player experience. 
Sincerely, Ascend Hyperion on behalf of 17,107 members of the Halo community. The next part of the video here will cover more of the questions and will include some personal takes and insights for me, all directed towards the Halo community at large, aka you, the viewers. I've done several multi-thousand person surveys in the community before, but this is by far the largest. I wanted to understand where the responders were coming from, because I wanted as much response outside my own personal following as possible. We had a pretty good spread. Nearly half the responders were from social media, 30% from YouTube, and Reddit alone clocked in 18%. That one was important for me, because the last time I did a big survey and the results trended on Reddit, the dude bros over there complained that they weren't represented. If they felt like they were left out, they sure were given the chance this time, and I'm happy they showed up. I clocked my typical metrics, 95% of the respondees were male, 3% were women, and 2.1% identified as non-binary. There was some minor squawking about the max age range being 25 plus, with people speculating I should have broken it up to the 30s and wagering an overwhelming majority of fans were closer to 30. While a populous slot, at just 38% of the community, the age ranges here do indicate Halo has some young blood in yet. We'll come back to this. One thing I was looking for is if Halo Infinite was resulting in growth in the Halo community. Infinite is technically the most accessible Halo game of all time, being multi-platform and free to play. Markedly, I can see that Infinite was the entry title for about 4% of respondees, which while greater than Halos 4 and 5, is nowhere near what you'd expect or want to match the replacement rate of fans aging out of community involvement. This is a complicated nut here. I'll continue to track this number to see if over time, the active Halo community finds itself more and more derivative of Halo Infinite, being 4% as my swaying baseline. I also want to point out something I found extremely interesting. To date, more respondees reported Halo 5 as the best Halo multiplayer than Halo Infinite, 13.7% versus 11.1%. There are probably a million theories you could propose here, but I think conceptually, the big takeaway is that regardless, this is proof that Halo 5 has its house. After all, it sported the longest intertidal lifespan in Halo's history, and itself polarized interests in the franchise. It remains one of Halo's most unique MPs, and bred a unique following all the same. This is another metric I will continue to track, because technically, the only other Halo game that's close in design to Halo 5 is Halo Infinite. If Infinite's general MP experience improves, will it begin to convert Halo 5 fans over? And as time passes, will we see Halo 5 fans represent larger and larger pools in the community? Before I go any further, a major point I want everyone listening to the video to absorb is how this survey in many ways breaks what I call the illusion of majority. So to say, often when we argue about Halo, we do so with the backing claims like nearly everyone thinks this, the greater majority, all Halo players, etc, etc, right? There are majorities, sure, but often only technically. Like, for example, if you tried to argue about which game had the best MP and said mostly everyone thinks Halo 3, you'd be wrong. Halo 3 gets the biggest slice of the pie, for sure, but that's only at 38.7%, a little over a third. Meaning that in reality, the actual large majority, you know, nearly two thirds of people, would tell you no, it's not Halo 3, it's something else. The illusion of majority falls apart for several key topics. The best MP, best campaign, preferred platform of playing Halo, how many people make microtransactions, and which part of Halo is the most important. Another real majority response that should get looked at actually came regarding esports. After all, esports has been a major influence on Halo Infinite, for better or for worse, under the pretense that it is a massively valuable part of the Halo experience. But despite its supposed major importance, only 29% of respondees actually watch esports. And only just about 5.5% of the total respondees indicated that competitive multiplayer was the most important part of Halo to them. So is it really as important to Halo as we've been led to believe? I want to explore that more in the future. 
Regarding the store and who buys what, the one thing that caught my eye was a huge drop in the Battle Pass sales. In the survey group, 75% of responders bought the Season 1 Battle Pass, and that was reduced to a little over 50% in Season 2. There are many metrics to observe in this survey, so you'll find a link to the results in the video description below if you want to keep exploring. Before I go, I want to say something. This survey and its results are intended as a resource, and more directly as a means of creating frame of reference free of the often overly emotional if not just disrespectful commentary people feel inclined to include. My intent was to give Halo fans a baseline for comparisons, to get us on some semblance of a same page, so that we may continue to track the evolution of Halo and our community. Everything here is a snapshot in time, a freeze frame of the community's feelings and realities, all of which are subject to change today. If you want to be involved in the future analytical efforts I have planned, make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and make sure you're following me on Twitter because I always want to grow these efforts. It was 17,000 this time, who knows what we can accomplish next. Like always, thank you for watching. Be sure you like the video if you like it and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Like I said, follow me on Twitter and you can continue the conversation in my Discord linked below. Until next time, I'll catch y'all later.